Hydronephrosis is a common condition affecting the urinary tract. Before starting the discussion on hydronephrosis itself, it is important to have a basic understanding of the normal anatomy of kidneys and the urinary tract. Human urinary tract consists of four major parts, the kidneys, which filter the blood and produce urine, the bladder, stores urine before voiding, and the two ureters that connect each kidney with the bladder, and the urethra, which drains urine out from the bladder. The junction where the ureter starts in the kidney is called the ureteropelvic junction, and the junction where the ureter joins the bladder is called the ureterovesical junction. In a cross-section of a kidney, the outermost layer is the renal capsule, which is made up of connective tissue. Then, towards the center, we have renal cortex, followed by renal medulla. Urine produced in the nephrons, located in renal cortex and medulla, is drained into the renal calluses, and then into the renal pelvis, and ultimately into the ureters. Hydronephrosis is defined as distension of renal calluses and renal pelvis with urine, as a result of urine outflow obstruction. This image shows a comparison between a normal kidney and a kidney with hydronephrosis. Appreciate the distension of the pelvic calliceal system in the abnormal kidney. The other term, hydrourethra, is defined as distension of the ureter with urine due to obstruction. It could be either unilateral or bilateral. Here is an image of a urinary system with both hydronephrosis and hydrourethra. In both hydronephrosis and hydrourethra, obstruction of urine outflow leads to buildup and backflow of urine, increasing the pressure inside the ureter. This will ultimately lead to changes in GFR, tubular function, and renal blood flow. GFR declines significantly with hours following acute obstruction, and the tubular ability to transport ions and dilute urine will be severely impaired. In addition, increased ureteric pressure will lead to pylovenous and pylolymphatic backflow. Acute hydronephrosis is usually reversible. However, in chronic hydronephrosis, the loss of function may be irreversible, even with correction of the obstruction. Common findings include compression of renal papilla, thinning of renal parenchyma around the calluses, and cortical atrophy. Macroscopic changes include flattening of the tubular epithelium due to chronic obstruction and increased collagen deposition. A multitude of causes exist for hydronephrosis and hydrourethra. These can be broadly categorized into ureter-level causes, bladder-level causes, and urethral-level causes. Some ureter-level causes include the following. Ureteropelvic junction obstruction. Ureterovesical junction obstruction. Urinary tract infections. Ureteral calculi. Papillary necrosis. Ureteral strictures. Ureteral tumors. Endometriosis. Pregnancy. Abdominal aortic aneurysms. Ovarian cysts. Inflammatory bowel disease cervical cancer, uterine prolapse, prostate cancer, and diverticular disease. Some bladder-level causes include the following. Neurogenic bladder, bladder calculi, bladder neck contracture, vesicoretoral reflux, bladder diverticulum, and cystocil. Some urethral-level causes include the following. Urethral stricture, urethral valves, urethral diverticulum, benign prostatic hyperplasia, and prostate cancer. Now let's discuss about the signs and symptoms of hydronephrosis. Hydronephrosis could be symptomatic or asymptomatic depending on the severity of the disease. In case of acute obstruction, a dull pain is frequently present due to distension of the bladder, collecting system, or renal capsule. The pain is felt in the sides or back of the abdomen and is referred to as flank pain. In case of acute complete obstruction, like with a ureteral stone, a severe pain is felt, which is called renal or ureteral colic. In lower ureteral obstruction, this pain radiates to the ipsilateral testicle or labia. By contrast, in slowly developing obstruction, pain is typically minimal or absent. Common examples include congenital ureteropelvic junction obstruction and pelvic tumors. Reduced urine output is also another common complaint in patients with hydronephrosis or hydrourethra. In addition, anuria may occur in cases of complete bilateral urinary tract obstruction, renal cortical necrosis, hemolytic uremic syndrome, sepsis, and bilateral renal artery obstruction. Other symptoms may include hematuria, suggestive of obstructing calculi, or a malignancy, nausea and vomiting, 
dysuria, or pain during urination and urinary urgency. In infants, the disease is typically asymptomatic. However, in more severe cases, loss of appetite and frequent urinary tract infections can occur. As far as the diagnosis is concerned, renal ultrasonography is the test of choice to exclude urinary tract obstructions. It is cheaper, widely available, and avoids potential allergic and toxic complications of contrast used in other imaging modalities. In addition, it can detect other causes of renal disease such as polycystic ovarian syndrome. However, ultrasound is less sensitive in detecting renal calculi, it is operator dependent. So, in suspected cases of calculi, an X-ray KVD or a CTKUB is indicated. Your analysis is also useful in assessing the signs of infection, which can manifest as significant puria. Microscopic chematuria may suggest the presence of a calculus or a tumor. Complete blood count will indicate elevated leukocyte counts in acute infection, and serum chemistry will show elevated blood urea nitrogen and creatinine. Finally, a bit about the treatment. The specific treatment of hydronephrosis depends on the underlying cause. In general, treatment can be divided into medical care and surgical care. Medical care includes pain control with analgesics and infection control and prevention with antibiotics. Any sign of infection, bilateral hydronephrosis or hydronephrosis in a patient with a single kidney should warrant urgent intervention. If the obstruction in the lower urinary tract, such as the bladder neck or urethra, urethral catheterization may be needed. However, it is important to know that the pathology itself may complicate the insertion of urinary catheter. For example, if there is a urethral stricture, catheterization may be difficult to perform. If urethral catheterization is failed, suprapubic catheterization may be indicated. Ureteral stenting is used to bypass the obstruction and dilate the ureter, which permits the urinary outflow. If stenting is failed, percutaneous nephrostomy may be indicated. All these options are for the temporary relief of the obstruction. As the definitive treatment, you should always correct the underlying cause of hydronephrosis. Okay, that covers almost everything you should learn about hydronephrosis. Hope someone found this video interesting and helpful. If you like this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment in the comment section, and please subscribe. Thanks for watching. See you soon in the next video.